Thank you, Madam Speaker. Minister, in the very short time I've allocated to me, I want to concentrate on the EU Council's response to the situation in the Middle East. But first, briefly, I want to refer to just two issues. First, the review of the MFF. Uh, this is a core matter for the EU, and it determines the monies at our disposal to pursue our priorities. I see there are new proposals there on own resources, and while I know it's only the start of the negotiation, nonetheless, I would hope that Ireland would be supportive of moves to reform uh, and increase the MFF. I heard Deputy Ocasi earlier refer to the absolute need to fund the Green Deal biodiversity and nature restoration. I fully agree and I want to emphasise very clearly that those of us who questioned the Commission's proposals on the nature restoration plan had two main concerns. That first of all it would be voluntary at farm level and secondly it would be funded. If we revise the MFF it certainly can go in that direction. In one sentence, I want to say that we must not neglect what is happening in Ukraine in light of the horrific situation in the Middle East. And in that context, I noted the invitation from Charles Michel to the heads of state to attend this meeting. And he says, and I quote, our responsibility is to remain united and coherent and act in line with our values as enshrined in the treaties. Coherent is a very important word in that our policy in regard to the Middle East must be coherent with our policy in regard to Ukraine. And it must be in line with EU values at this time with the Israeli bombardment of Gaza and the unfolding humanitarian crisis. And it is worth listing those values, human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, rule of law and human rights. I have little time left, but perhaps the best way to spend it is to quote the wise words, the contextualised words of the Secretary General of the UN, Antonio Guterres. He condemns atrocities on all sides and he puts the situation in context when he says, the grievances of the Palestinian people cannot justify the appalling attacks by Hamas and those appalling attacks cannot justify the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. He says, even war has rules. We must demand that all parties uphold and respect their obligations under international humanitarian law. Sometimes people say the UN is toothless and needs to be reformed. Maybe so, but yesterday it earned its stripes. Today and yesterday, Antonio Guterres stood up and was counted.